Thank you for taking the time this morning to join us for a webinar on Mingle 12, a UI we're very excited about. Have two great presenters here for you today. And with that, I give you Richard and Brittany. <sighs> Thanks, Keith. Hello. <laughs> So we're going to talk a little bit about Mingle 12 today. Um, just before we get started, just uh, our, our typical slide, just to introduce us as RPI Consultants. Yeah. Uh, we're an Infor Alliance partner, founded in 1999 here at Baltimore headquarters where we're filming today. But as you can see, we are continuously growing. So we've actually got um, a new headquarters. Most of our tech people are down in Tampa, Florida. You mean our HQ2? <laughs> HQ2, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> and then we've also got our image now practice over in Kansas City and growing. I am moving to Denver, so we're hoping Ooh. to get one out there. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> so today's agenda, um, just a few things. We're going to talk about the new look that is Mingle 12. We'll get into a little bit of the navigation because there's a little difference there. And then we'll talk about how to actually get this going and upgrade to Mingle 12 itself. Yeah, so where does Mingle 12 fit in for the Lawson 10 customer? Good question. Yeah, well, it's the <laughs> next evolution of the you know, Enforce front end that sort of holds together uh, all the var various pieces of your Enforce solution. Uh, it's a, a next step forward. It's pretty different than previous versions of Mingle in that it's not based upon SharePoint. Right. And I think the exciting thing about Mingle 12 is um, it's available for Lost in 10 customers, but it is the same exact version that you would use with Infor Cloud Suite or uh, you know, version 11. Which a lot uh, of people are going to. Exactly. Right? So it gives you a leg up on moving towards Cloud Suite financials in that you can take advantage of the exact same uh, version of Mingle, exact same front end that you would experience uh, if you were on the absolute latest applications. Yeah. It's like a baby step before you move on to that big final step. Yeah, um, absolutely. Suite, right? Yeah, and uh, you know, here at RPI, we like um, testing out new software and staying current mm -hmm. and getting in all sorts of trouble with system <laughs> problems before our customers have to experience that. Right. Uh, so we've gone through <laughs> and done all the homework yep. and uh, managed to get um, a, a, a pretty, pretty good looking environment uh, internally that sort of lines up all these versions that we're gonna talk about later. And we'll be showing some screenshots. Yeah, we've got our, some stuff so you can see what it's gonna look like. Yeah, all right. So with that, we'll talk about this new look. Um, things are gonna look a little bit different. Uh, the biggest thing is that visual appeal. Um, there are a lot of changes that I think are very positive changes that people are going to, um, they're going to, What's the right word? I don't they're, know. They're, they're, gonna, they're going they're to like. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, it's, it's 10 a.m. It's, uh, it's appealing to me, right? I yeah. mean, look at this. So first off, I can, I can see, I can read all the words. Mm -hmm. uh, I can Margaret see what's text. going on. The, tech, the, the buttons are a lot easier to sort of identify yeah. where they are on the page. And you can see both the symbols and the text, which yeah. now you don't even have to worry about either or you get them both. Mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah, it's certainly just a lot more intuitive. Mm -hmm. uh, so when I, when I see this page and when I interact with this page, I don't have to spend a lot of brain power trying to figure out, okay, how do I get to the next screen? Or where's the change button? Oh yeah, it's the pencil icon. Uh, right. It's all just pretty apparent. So it just helps me move through the application a lot faster. Yeah, and there's, there's some themes available. It's a little bit more responsive and we'll talk about both of those too. So one of the nice things, and one of the questions I get a lot uh, with version 10 is just, can you change that white screen? It's, it's mm -hmm. very white, and a lot of products and designs and apps and software are going towards the option of giving you that dark look, which a lot of people have asked for. So now you've, um, Infor has blessed you with this new option of all these themes that you can, you can pick your color if you want to customize it. You can do that high contrast that we had in that last photo screenshot, and then you can also do that dark. Yeah, so everybody can just, uh, just use the color scheme that suits them best. Mm -hmm. It's an individual choice. Exactly. Cool. Who doesn't love that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, so um, <laughs> responsive design. What does this mean? It basically is that the, um, the website will um, change around its layout based upon the size of your screen, right? Mm -hmm. So if we think about uh, older versions of Portal, it's pretty much a box 
And that box is going to be the same if you have a small screen or if you have a big screen, you just get a little box with a lot of blank space around it. Yeah. Um, so uh, we're moving towards uh, a layout that it responds to the size of the screen it's viewed upon. Yeah. Uh, so you can change your window size and see uh, the screen sort of uh, uh, lay itself out to, to take advantage of what you have. Of course, this is all moving towards uh, mobile, to, uh, the ability to um, access these sites on mobile devices, which right, of course comes in a step. lot step. of different sizes yeah. and shapes. So as you can see here, we've got it all laid out if you've got a nice wide screen, but if you just bring your browser in and make it really skinny, like you have a bunch of tabs open all at one time, it's gonna just come into this one column mm -hmm. so that you can see it all. All right, so on to navigation. How are we going to get around in this new, uh, this new Mingle 12? Mm -hmm. One of the biggest things is something that actually is going to specifically be new in FSM that Mingle 12 has is this app menu. Um, so the buttons that you're used to at the top right now in version 10 are now going to be in this drop down, and you can have as many as you want. There's different page numbers and such, but it's all in one localized location. Yeah, this makes a lot of sense because mm -hmm. in previous versions of Mingle, that bar along the top took up a lot of real mm -hmm. estate and really could only accommodate like so many couple. icons going right. across. Um, there are a lot of different pieces now. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see even with our sort of basic setup here, you know, we've got a, a, a dozen or so yeah. uh, icons available. So, um, and of course, we're administrators, so we have access to all to these everything. different pieces. <laughs> you're not going to see all this. If yeah, you're your user. general end users would be yeah. their view would be a little bit more more limited. So, uh, basically, the way that you get to different applications, maybe Loss and Portal or Global HR yeah. or yeah. RQC. Uh, you'll do that through this menu in the upper left, which flies out rather than uh, having uh, icons yeah. stuck at the top. Doesn't take up nice real estate on your screen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, so we self-named this the side and slide navigation. Yeah. <laughs> so that's just us calling it that. That's not the, the actual I don't know. Term. I think it's going to stick. It might stick yeah. just because of saying it. I'll right? call Dell right after okay. this. <laughs> So the side and side navigation is just uh, kind of back to what you were used to in version 9 is that uh, you have the side navigation on the left hand side. You can dock it if you want. You can mm -hmm. keep it hidden if you want as well. And then you've got all of like your content, your loss and user um, options, your help menu, your bookmarks, your favorites, and frequent and recent, which are two things that we'll talk about a little bit later. Yeah. This, uh, I, it goes back to a style of uh, original portal. Uh, but it feels a lot more modern the way you interact with this. You can slide it in and out. Uh, you can expand or, or uh, com uh, condense the, uh, the different areas in here. So it feels a lot more modern navigation. Exactly. All right, and going off of that, the landing page, which you just saw, it's just you've got your pinned favorites, your frequent and recent, which again I'll talk about in the next slide, um, your common tasks that you're used to seeing, but everything kind of in a nice little landing page dashboard. Yeah. So this is what I see when I first sign in the portal, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So rather than seeing a blank screen and then having to enter in a screen code, uh, here I've got a list of different screens that I work in frequently and it's mm -hmm. easy to just click on one and get there. Yeah, it's going to be super quick, especially those frequent and recent ones. Mm -hmm. It's using your cache and you can actually just go into your user options and you just enable it so that you have that cache um, remembering where you've been in the history of what you're doing so that you can actually, um, once you enable it, I'm just going to scoot back, then you'll, you get all the frequent ones that you want. Once it even tells you the last time you were in it. So if you were just like, I know I was in it 20 minutes ago, not like three days ago, you can usually find that stuff. And if you want, you can always clear it the same way you would clear your cache in your browser. So you don't get that backlog. Cool. So uh, let's talk about the drill, because I think this is probably one of the most useful improvements um, to the whole system here. Uh, our drill is a lot more flexible. So when I drill in, um, I see the, the uh, data I'm looking at within the drill in more of a traditional list view that we've seen through other parts of the Lawson application. And what's super cool about this is I can move these columns around and I can click and actually sort on these columns. So when I'm, when I'm drilling in and looking at data, I'm no longer uh, restricted to only seeing uh, information in the order that's presented. Uh, I can quickly sort on one of these columns to bring uh, certain transactions up to the top. That'll save you a lot of time. Totally. And 
uh, here's something that people have been asking for for a long time, something that's really hard to get with uh, other parts of the application like the Excel Query Wizard is exporting drill output to Excel. Mm. And here I've got an export button, so anytime I see a list here in the drill, I can click on export and that'll pop up a spreadsheet uh, with the data I was just looking at. Yeah, so that makes things a lot easier. It's been something that's uh, been asked for quite a bit, so we're really excited about that function. Hey, it sounds like we've got a couple of questions. We do. All right, uh, we have Bingle now, and we have it on a separate Windows server uh, for it. Um, do we need to continue, uh, do we need to, uh, do we need to continue uh, uh, the separate Windows server from Ingle 12? What's the best practice here? Yeah, I'm going to address that a little bit later on in the presentation. So if you just hang with me, we'll talk okay. about the infrastructure requirements. All right, got a couple more questions. Let's try these out. Uh, can you make the landing page anything you want? Anything you want. Um, I don't believe it's um, completely customizable just yet. Those are the standards that come with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sure uh, if we look around a little bit more, there might be a, some more customizable opportunities there. Yeah, the, the, the portal landing page is, is pretty much what you see is what you get. Um, now, Mingle itself has a whole home pages section, right. which is extremely customizable. Just not the Lawson part. Right, yeah, so there's, there's sort of different parts here and um, there, there's a lot of uh, information out from Infor on Mingle 12 homepages that, that you can check out and see how you can customize that. I would say that for a customer that is uh, only running Lawson 10 and does not have uh, any landmark applications, uh, you might find that the uh, Mingle homepages are um, probably about as, um, useful as they were in previous versions of Mingle where uh, it's good for putting up static content or you know, uh, links to how-to guides or announcements or, or what have you. Uh, but users are probably gonna find their way in a portal very quickly and that's where they wanna be. So the landing page is probably what they're gonna see mostly. Okay, a couple other questions. So, some you may need to file away till later, but will Mingle 11 still require a separate server for on-premise Customers, do we need? Do we still have the option to use the Lawson portal? Yeah. Again, we're going to get into the technical aspects okay. a little bit later, but um, ask that again uh, at the end in case I didn't cover it. I'll come back to that one. <laughs> okay. That. Okay. And then, what version of uh, Infor Lawson ten do we need to be on to use Mingle twelve? Yeah, pretty much the latest version. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, and can I make GHR my landing page? Um, landing page. For like as if you would first navigate into the application and see Global HR. So Global HR would be its own module yeah. that you, we, you would click into. Okay. Yeah, I think it's all about the link you use to get into the system. Right. Said currently their landing page is LBI. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, that's, that's a pretty common. Um, way to set up your portal homepage, especially in previous versions of Lawson, is you'd use framework services as sort of your homepage, and then that allowed you to create some sort of shortcuts and, and links and things. Um, and then of course, moving to 10, and with Mingle, uh, LBI sort of moved out to its own Mingle plugin. Um, so I think we'll see pretty similar here uh, with Mingle 12, is that uh, if you wanted to use LBI, it would be on a you know separate uh, app that you get through through the, um, the, the application menu. Mm. All right, we'll come back to the rest of these when you get to that part of the presentation. Cool, thanks. Right. Okay, another nice feature is this new required field. Um, it's something you can enable and disable, but essentially uh, this is useful if you have entered a bunch of fields and you're still getting an error saying that you're missing some fields. Lawson will actually notify you and say this field is required and actually point you in the right direction. So just a nice little tidbit. Yeah. All right, and here we have our Mingle activity feed. Uh, so this is a way for different users to interact with each other uh, within Mingle. And um, just sort of at its, at its most basic use, 
Um, you can send messages between people. Now, why would I want to do that rather than email or instant messaging? Well, you could think of it like Slack for Lawson, right? If you ever use Slack, it's a way to quickly post up to a group of people and you know, whoever is available at that time might take a look at your message and respond and be able to act on something that you need. Um, so uh, we find that the communication channel uh, within Mingle 12 does, uh, does fill in a gap. Uh, maybe in between more uh, traditional lines of business communication. Kind of avoids that reply all button, so those emails. Yeah, totally. And, and it like keeps <laughs> your messaging right within the solution. So if you're mm -hmm. talking about transactions and loss right and uh, everything's all in one place. Yeah. All right, so this bookmarks, I put it in quotations because there's kind of two sets of bookmarks. Um, as you can see, it mentions bookmark this page, manage bookmarks. Uh, what you're used to as being called bookmarks is that left hand side where you have requisition center, your in basket, mm -hmm. that's still there as we showed you before. Um, this bookmarks is kind of what favorites was in your contextual applications. So it's just another way to add your favorite, your favorite forms that you're using continuously and it's just gonna be in the upper right hand corner button. And it actually offers you the option to now create folders. So if you have more than one role and you wanna group a couple of different forms, you can do that. Nice. All right, now, Let's geek out and talk about <laughs> what do we need to do to upgrade our Lost in 10 environment to Mingle 12. Answer all those questions. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so um, what version of Lost in do I need to be on? Pretty much the latest one. Um, the, the, uh, across your Infor solution, uh, Mingle 12 has prerequisites and uh, pretty much every other component needs to be, uh, I'd say, you know, within a one year old uh, release. There's a knowledge base article that details out uh, all the prerequisites at a high level. Uh, you want to be on uh, LSF 1009 or uh, 1010, which just came out. Uh, you want to be on the latest apps. And then for your landmark server, that needs to be landmark version 11. So Mingle 12 does run on its own Windows server, um, kind of like how Mingle 11 works. Uh, so we'd stand up new Windows servers for Mingle 12. Now, uh, it does support Windows Server 2016. And uh, the memory requirements are, are pretty high. Uh, it's recommended to have 24 gigabytes of memory on your Mingle 12 box. Uh, Mingle 12 requires ADFS authentication. Um, so you'll need to have that in place. Uh, we recommend doing that first before setting up Mingle 12. Uh, of course, it takes a SQL Server database uh, as, a, as a repository. And um, along with ADFS, you'll need to have uh, uh, SSL set up across your, your environment so all of your web endpoints are HTTPS. Uh, Mingle 12 is packaged with Infor OS. Uh, so when you install Mingle 12, uh, it actually installs a, a couple of different components, including Infor Document Management, uh, which is uh, Infor's uh, basic document repository. Uh, ION, which powers the communication uh, between your transactional applications and, uh, and Mingle. And then Infor Federation Services, uh, which is how um, the Infor solution integrates with ADFS for single sign-on. All right, so what are the steps an organization would need to actually take to start this upgrade once they've got all those requirements in place? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> well, the first step is you need to get yourself a license, right? What kind of license? <laughs> what kind of license? <laughs> um, well, I would recommend talking to your Infor account executive and asking uh, them about the no charge light license that's available for uh, current uh, Mingle license holders. Uh, that gets you access to the basics of Mingle 12, uh, pretty much equivalent functionality that you have in Mingle 11, as well as a very limited uh, license that you can use to try out some of the more advanced features. Okay. Once your licensing is lined up and Infor OS is available on your product downloads, um, take a look at your uh, Lawson solution and make sure that you meet all of the prerequisites uh, They're pretty aggressive when it comes to versioning, um, so you're probably going to have to do a round of updates to get there. Uh, I just want to also that we are showing uh, Mingle 12 with Portal 10.1. Uh, they kind of go hand in hand 
to get all of those uh, use, user improvements. All the features you all the, all the features that we've <laughs> talked about, uh, really some of them are delivered as part of Portal 10.1 and some of them are delivered as part of Mingle 12. Uh, so you want to uh, make sure you're bringing Portal up to the latest version as well. All right, once we've got our lost environment updated um, and gone through a round of cyclical updates to get us to the latest and greatest, uh, at that point, we want to switch our environment over from LS as STS to ADFS authentication uh, if you haven't done so already. Uh, Mingle 12 requires ADFS. Uh, for that, you'll need to make sure that all of your web endpoints are secured with HTTPS. Uh, and basically, you'll integrate Lawson with, a, with an ADFS server that you have as part of your domain. Uh, that involves doing a certificate exchange and setting up the relaying party trust for each of the applications that we want to do single sign on to. All right, finally, I have my environment prepared so I can actually bring up Mingle 12. Now, Mingle 12 is not an in-place upgrade. Uh, it installs on its, a new server. This is good because it means we don't have to disrupt our existing Mingle server. We'll stand up a new Windows box, Windows Server 2016, and uh, execute the InforOS install and configure it to work with the Lawson applications. We could do so without um, disrupting Mingle 11, uh, even in our production environment. Ah, so Mingle 11 will still be working. Yeah, when you absolutely. Have Mingle 12. Right. And that leads us into our final step, and that is start using Mingle 12. <laughs> Now, the nice thing about this is because we're not going to necessarily bring down our Mingle 11 server, okay. we can actually have two uh, Mingles running concurrently. And it's just a matter of asking a user to go to that new website URL for them to see the new Mingle experience. So if someone doesn't necessarily mesh with the Mingle 12 option, they can still use Mingle 11? Yeah, and you don't need to do a big bang rollout. I okay. mean, chances are your, your strategy is you want to decommission Mingle 11 because you don't want to have too many servers to maintain mm -hmm. in the mix. Uh, but you can take that change a little bit gradually and couple it with training and um, start off with your, your advocates, your power users, uh, people that in your organization that are excited about uh, change and new functionality and give them a taste and let them be proponents of this change uh, throughout the rest of the organization. All right, it sounds pretty doable. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Much easier for the users. They've got that option. Yeah. So. All right, well, that's all we've got. We can go back to questions. Oh, we got a couple <laughs> questions. I have a question. Okay. Do I need SharePoint to run Mingle 12? No, Mingle 12 does not include SharePoint. It's straight in for software. Uh, it runs within ASP.NET. Great. <laughs> all right, yeah. uh, let's go back and review some of these questions, make sure we got them all covered. Um, we talked about the Mingle 11, uh, or will Mingle 12 require a separate server? You answered that one, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mingle right. 12 does require a separate server, so you'll have one per each environment. Okay. And um, is the activity fee just for your organization, or is it for all users of loss and coast to coast? It's just for your organization, and if you're in a multi-tenant environment, it's just for your tenant. It's even okay. just for your environment, so prod and tests don't uh, share the same activity feed. Is there, um, does anybody know the knowledge base article offhand or? It was on a slide, but I'm sure we'll send that information out. We'll make sure it's, uh, you can search for a uh, mingle in the knowledge base. So there's uh, and a filter on KB articles. Ah, there we go. Yeah. There it is. Mm -hmm. So what was it again? 185-9277. Okay. It's up on your screen right now. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry I missed step one. Could you go back to that slide for the first step of going to mingle? Yeah. Glad we got this pointer. Step one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Got> license. <laughs> the Hawaii <laughs> driver's license. Yeah. 
<laughs> so uh, step one is get access to the uh, no. Mingle 12 downloads. Of course, you can do this concurrently with some of your other planning, uh, but there'll be a, uh, a uh, I believe there will be a no charge license addendum that uh, needs to be executed. Uh, so that way you can actually get access to download Infor OS on premise. All right, the next one might be a reference to Infor uh, uh, question, but if you go to Bingo 12 as part of the light license, is that the same as going full-fledged to version 11, or will we have to change Mingle again when going to version 11? Um, you would be on the same version uh, as, ver as you would with a version 11 applications. So separate instance, separate server anyway, correct? Between Mingle 11 and Mingle Yeah, exactly. I mean, if you're, if you're looking at um, going to the version 11 applications on premise, um, I guess it depends on your strategy, if it's uh, more of an in-place project or a full parallel uh, build out. You know, with Global HR uh, version 11, you can add Global HR version 11 into your loss in 10 environment. Uh, it, you don't need to rebuild everything. So you can take advantage of this new Mingle 12 server to add in uh, GHR and it'll run on your Landmark 11 box that you have up for IPA. So uh, uh, this is a question from the audience. Uh, oh, it's from Bill Getty. Uh, Richard, if, uh, if, if we need assistance with uh, getting this done, are you available uh, on an hourly basis? Uh, yeah, sure. My afternoon's open, so hit me up. All right, there we go. <laughs> uh, no, in okay. all seriousness, um, we, uh, we have sketched out and a services approach that we recommend uh, for doing this. So, um, you know, it's a, it's a part of all of our on-premise uh, loss and deployment projects right now. Uh, we have these, um, these updates going on uh, currently. So happy to talk to you in more detail uh, to uh, fine tune an approach and uh, help you work out um, a strategy for, for getting there and uh, of course quote out the uh, services that we would recommend. Yeah, and, and if, if you need some assistance, just shoot a note to questions at rpic.com and we'll get you squared away. Um, does Mingle, oh, more questions coming in. Does Mingle 12 still use contextual applications? And if so, will any custom ones need to be recreated in some new format? Um, yes, it still uses contextual applications, and I'm not sure if you'll need to rewrite uh, custom contextual apps or not. Um, if you want to send me some details on that, uh, I can try and do a little research for you after. All right. And um, is Infor OS the only license cost I will need to worry about? Uh, yeah, my understanding is that if you currently run Mingle 11, you can move to Mingle 12 at, at no charge. Um, the, uh, there are additional features available that, that, uh, that can be a potential for you, uh, and they are, char uh, they are chargeable features. Uh, but everything that we showed today, uh, I believe, is included in the no charge license. Yeah, now I would encourage you to uh, contact your Infor AE about it. But if you need a uh, a broker to help you with the question and some of the technical questions to make sure you get everything answered, we're more than happy to participate in that conversation. Um, is there any date when we have to be on Mingle 12 yet? No, we don't have a sunset date for Mingle 11 at the moment. So okay. there's not a there's there's not a deadline. Um, I would recommend um, you know, making the change uh, sometime in 2018 or maybe early 2019. Um, you're probably looking at moving to ADFS authentication uh, before um, the middle of next year anyway. Um, so at that point, your environment will probably uh, be in a great place to add Mingle 12 into it. Yeah, it seems like the change to the screen colors and the screen contrast is is probably reason enough to make the change because I know I've heard a lot of complaints about the white screens in previous versions. Mm -hmm. um, how long has Mingle 12 been generally released? Mingle 12 has been out, I believe, for about a year. Um, I suppose I'd 
need to do a bit of research to tell you the exact date. So about a year and it's pretty stable. So it's uh, gone through some updates and stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. This isn't a you know, 12.0.0 product or, any, or anything like that. Uh, we wouldn't be talking about it if it weren't stable enough to use in a real uh, customer production environment. All right, uh, they keep on coming. Um, will design studio screens need to be converted? I believe Design Studio works as is in in under uh, Mingle 12. This is just ask the question day of uh, Richard Stout here. So uh, yeah, it's a it's, 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 it's an interesting <laughs> topic. Trump Richard uh, on camera. Oh, another question. Um, some customers have integrated Mingle Foundation with perceptive content image now using Learn Mode. Any idea if this approach will work with Mingle 12? Um, I, I expect that the uh, screen scraping that you have set up with Learn Mode uh, should be consistent um, because that's interacting with Portal, which runs in a frame the same way that Portal runs in a frame under the previous version of Mingle. Um, I guess we'll have to try it out to uh, to to give you some some real world feedback on that um, there you know there might be some field name changes uh, that you need to just edit your your learn mode for and we have an imaging team that's very familiar with uh, perceptive content so mm -hmm. more than happy to assist in that uh, yeah I guess the, the thing I want to say about mingle 12 is it's an it's a pretty easy change to make in that you can stand up the server in your test environment and start testing and start exploring with how it works with ImageNow and custom contextual apps and all the other things you've done uh, with Mingle without really making a big, big disruption. Um, so it's sort of easy to get your new Mingle box set up and then take your time to work through these things. Um, and then at the same time, you know, have a replica of production with your you know, existing Mingle 11 server up and running. All right. Come on down for the new Price is Right. Um, let's see, one other question. Uh, we're on Mingle tw 10. Do we need to be on Mingle 11 to move to Mingle 12, or can we move straight to Mingle 12? You can go straight from Mingle 10 to Mingle 12. Yeah, th this is possible. Um, so Mingle 10 be compatible with all those latest versions? No, that's where you're going to run into trouble. Um, thanks. Yeah, that's, that's what I was just trying to figure out. Uh, the problem is that when you, M Mingle 10 isn't gonna work with ADFS. Um, so if you did a big bang approach to updating the whole system and cutting over to Mingle 12, that would be possible. But uh, honestly, I would recommend doing a more gradual approach to minimize risk uh, and update to up, do an in-place update on your Mingle 10 server to go to Mingle 11 and get all that working first uh, before stepping uh, up to Mingle 12. Okay, looks like we, oh, nope, wrong again. Uh, can If you're on Mingle 10, you might be on Windows 2008. Uh, so that might, br that might bring you some other challenges. Uh, and in that case, it might make sense to do a more aggressive update. Uh, happy to talk to you in uh, more detail, sort of uh, discuss the pros and cons of either approach. Absolutely. Um, can we upgrade to uh, Portal 10.1 using Mingle 11, then upgrade to Mingle 12? Yes, you can update to Portal 10.1 under Mingle 11, and then update to Mingle 12. You'll get some of the advantages uh, here. Um, you know, just with the Portal 10.1 update. All right, I don't think I missed any of the questions. If anybody else asked a question in, in this lengthy box here and we didn't address your question, please uh, type it in real quickly. Uh, lots of thank you messages. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, thank uh, Brittany and uh, Richard for a wonderful presentation here today.